Hey everyone, it's Javi here and in this video I wanted to share with you a couple of learnings and concepts that have helped me over the past few months to design a posting experience at my current role at Tribe. This is the first video of a series where I'll be walking you through five product areas that are essential to designing almost any multiplayer product experience. If you happen to be new to my channel and this is the first time that you're watching one of my videos, welcome. My name is Javi and I make weekly videos about product design skills, principles, and practices to help you build digital products and bring your ideas to life. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. From an end user perspective, posting is everything, especially in social type of products that are driven by user generated content. Posting is a primary function and how your post is defined is then going to heavily influence the rest of your user experience. Before jumping into Tribe and showing you what we have today and what we've explored in the past, let me actually walk you through a couple of concepts that I've looked at in the past that I've considered to be very inspirational from other products. The first example that I want to share with you, which I think is a great composing experience, is medium.com, which if you're unfamiliar with it, is a blogging platform where people, as you can see, can post uh, articles within specific topics. You can follow other writers and essentially, yeah, it's a great blogging platform and it's beautifully designed. And as you can see, the, the posts here look great and people can have their own publications and you have all this kind of really nice formatting. You can add images and so on. And I think this is really great because at the time when Medium launched, the other alternative that I can think of that was really big in blogging uh, was and still is wordpress.com, right? And coming from WordPress, if you were to have been writing a blog then when, when at the time that Medium launched, and it, it still really is the case that you have all these formatting options like right on the screen, like all these buttons and things that you can toggle on and off for your text. And it, it made it like really easy for people to blog, but at the same time, it was a very, it's a very busy, uh, visual interface, but at the same time, it makes uh, you know all the tools that you need to blog very accessible. However, in Medium, since they started, they took this approach of just having uh, you know this screen. And it, by the way, here I'm just um, working on a new story. I'm, I'm writing a new story on Medium, and what I'm shown here is pretty much a blank screen because Medium just wants me to focus on the story, right? So I could write a title here and you can see that uh, medium is telling me here the the type of, of line that i have here i can press enter and now i start telling my story and what i found really fascinating since the very beginning of medium is that there is nothing here right so you really just have to focus on you know typing whatever it is that that you want to write and there's nothing here to bother you. Uh, you just have a little bit of a, of a saving function here to let you know that whatever it is that you're writing is being saved as a draft, which is pretty great. And they do a really good job in terms of hiding all that formatting and, and, and you know all those power tools um, that you may need as you are writing your posts. Like for example, uh, these things only appear when you highlight uh, a text, right? So for example, if I want to make this bold or I want to then write a quote here. Everything is sort of just progressively disclosed as I need it. And I think that is a really great touch. Uh, also, there are a bunch of other tools that, that you may need for Medium uh, since this is a platform where everything that you post sort of has a focus on being shared elsewhere. And so there's a bunch of tools here uh, within this more options menu, such as, for example, being able to add tags, right? So uh, this is the place where you can, for example, configure, um, you know, a certain category of, of whatever it is that you're writing. So it can be more easily found within the medium platform. So that is one way. And you can see it, it doesn't interfere really with, with what you're writing, but it is an option that you have before you publish. Something else that you have here, you have more options to, to share draft link, which is very, very helpful. And one thing that I really like is that if you go to the more settings, uh, you can see that they even give you a preview 
of what the post will look like once it actually gets published in the platform. And this can be really helpful as well as SEO settings, right? So if you want to, to get your, your post to be well ranking in search engines like Google, then, uh, you know, medium will give you the tools, uh, not, not off the bat, not, you know, to interfere with, with your writing, but, uh, they will give it to you here in sort of a secondary panel so you can access that whenever you want. So I think that's a really great touch. And you even have like even more progressive disclosure here for even more advanced settings. So I think this is really well executed. The second example that I wanted to share with you is linear. If you are unfamiliar with linear, it's an issue tracking tool that is used by, by teams that are working, I think mostly on software projects, uh, such as tribe, we use linear internally, uh, and it allows us to keep track of, of just tasks and, and things that we want to do on the product, um, such as design updates. We can, we can create issues here that are tied to, um, to our code base. So, so we can connect these issues to other tools like GitHub or, or GitLab. And yeah, it just makes the workflow of product development very simple and very fast. And um, it's a really well-crafted tool. And one of the things that I really like about Linear is, is the, is the, you know, the posting experience of actually creating that issue. So let me take you there and show you what I mean. For this video, I've actually created a demo private team to just illustrate the posting experience without having to bother you with all the other things that we've got going on in our, in our Linear. Uh, but essentially you can see you have two trigger points uh, within, within linear. Typically this one is not going to be here because this is just, a, an empty state for, for this, uh, issue section because we don't have any issues created yet. So most likely, um, if you're using the visual interface, you're going to end up like hovering over to this new issue button. And as you can see, as you hover over it, the tooltip also tells you, uh, the keyboard shortcut. So if I were just to press C, uh, standing for create, then it will open up the model here, uh, within view to allow you to, to compose an issue. And there's a couple things that I really like about this. The first one is that as you can see, it doesn't really get in the way of whatever it is that I'm doing, right? So if I can be here in the backlog or I can be in my board, which is sort of a Kanban style. And, you know, no matter where I am, one of the benefits of having that posting experience as a model is that if you then can combine that within a desktop experience uh, to have a button that is readily accessible across your entire product, then it's just going to make the posting that much easier and that much more accessible. Uh, so that is one of the really great benefits of having the posting experience like this. And, and, you know, there's a couple other examples of other platforms that, that do this. Um, Facebook, for example, they do have that little ad button at the very top of their, their, you know, at the very right of their top navigation. And, and it works in the very same way. It opens up the modal, um, right, right in view, wherever you are. So that's a really great touch. One, one very subtle thing is that, you know, I am here in my demo team and because I am in it and I press on new issue, there is a little bit of context awareness, uh, which makes the workflow just a tiny bit faster. Um, and you can see it here, right? So, uh, issues are living within teams and because I am, you know, hitting the new issue action from within the demo team, it's going to automatically detect that and, and make sure that when I'm creating that issue, it's going to be categorized within the team. So that's really great. And for example, if you are using the Kanban board here, you can see, we've got a couple of, of steps, you know, of, of swim lanes, like backlog to do in progress. Let's say I wanted to create an issue that I'm already working on. Right. So typically you would think, okay, let's create a new issue. Let's give it a title. Uh, let's give it some description, which I think is not mandatory. Um, and then I would come here to set status and I would change it to in progress. So that's one way to go about it. However, there is even that extra bit of, of context awareness that is really great, which is that, uh, if I actually discard this and I press on this plus button here that says add issue next to in progress, then it's going to automatically take that into account. So 
This can be really helpful if you have, for example, Linear allows you to do like custom views where you already have some, some labels that you're filtering by, or you're looking only in issues that are assigned to you. And everything that you account for there is going to be taken into consideration by the composer, which is this modal right here. So this is really great. And other things that I can just mention about this is that sometimes you have a long list of things that you want to report if you're doing, for example, bug testing. Uh, they've been really smart to actually uh, enable a toggle here that says create more. So if I were to save the issue uh, in this case, it's not going to remove the model from, from view, right? If I didn't have this and I wrote like uh, title two, let's say, and I save issue, now it's going to be removed from view. And then one other thing that I could mention here is that the modal was not always the, the, the visual interface for creating uh, issues in linear. Actually, it used to be that, as you can see here, there's a maximizer here to open in full view. This used to be the, the experience when you were creating an issue in linear. So the model is actually quite new. And what, we, what they used to have is this. Um, and here you can see that you have an issue title and just like in the other one, you know, you have all the exact same functionality uh, as in the composer in the model, uh, but the properties are set on the right side. And I think this is also a really great experience because first of all, the priorities in linear, you know, when you're creating an issue are sometimes almost as important as the, as the content itself, right? Like you want it to be, for example, to be properly labeled. So for example, say like, this is a bug, uh, this should be assigned to me, this is high priority. Um, and this should be in progress. And this just makes it very fast uh, and, and intuitive to actually go through the properties of your post and set this up. And this is just to say that there's a couple of products and opportunity, you know, uh, scenarios where you're going to want to make these sort of secondary, uh, you know, properties of your posts very easy to, to access in the case, for example, of linear, where sometimes, you know, this is the, actually uh, still the interface. If I were to come here to one of the issues, you can see it's a very similar interface and I can come here to edit, or I can actually just edit it straight away on the right side. Uh, again, it's just, uh, you know, a product decision in the case that your product um, is, is really benefited from actually highlighting these a little more. Um, and this is really useful in the case that, you know, you're going to end up having like tens, maybe hundreds of issues within, uh, your team and you want to be able to easily be able to, to, you know, manage these properties. Uh, and of course they have other ways of doing this by, for example, uh, right clicking on the issue and then having all these options here. Uh, but through the posting experience, it becomes readily available as well. So that's just an example. And you know, there are other products that also highlight properties on the right side. Um, you know, another product that's very similar to linear, like GitHub, uh, they have the exact same interface of give me the, the main column on the left where I can actually write my content and then having the right panel on the side where I can do the label, I can do the assigning and so on. So again, examples where secondary properties are as important as the content of the post itself. The third concept that I want to share with you is from a product called Canny. And Canny is simply a tool that allows you to, to capture and organize uh, customer feedback. And this can be public facing as well. So your customers can come in and see, you know, the different status updates of, of things that you may be working on based on that, on those feature requests. And it's a very simple um, experience, but I also thought very smart uh, from Canny. And let me show you what that looks like. So let me see, not here, this one here. So in this case, I am literally in Canny's Canny. So I'm in their product board. I'm in feature requests. And as you can see, I have two columns here. The left column is, let me see if I can maximize it a bit more so you can see it uh, a little better. So on the left side, I have the, the composer, right? In this case, I have a, a left-sided sort of widget where it seems like I can add a title, I can add some details, and as a sort of secondary option here, 
uh, I can also attach an image. And here on the right side, you see already like all the feature requests that people have already made. So one of the really you know big aspects of, of handling uh, feature requests, and, and we think about this a lot also at Tribe, is you want to you want to make the work of of the people that are handling feedback as easy as possible and part of that is making sure that you handle duplicates uh, so making sure that people are not going to be requesting the same thing twice um, and actually then encourage that if there is something that's already readily available within your product board uh, to be able to just encourage people to upvote whatever is already there uh, so this, this can be a really great way for for customers to voice out, you know, their interests and for the most popular, uh, you know, things that get upvoted to be at the very top of your list. So what's really great about this is that the title section here not only is an input for a new post, it is also a filter of the right side column. So let's see, what could I grab from here? If I were to, let's say, do some kind of feature request that is related to GitHub, you can see that as I type, there's going to be, a, you know, this is going to change to suggested posts. And so what is what it's what, what it's encouraging me as a user of the platform is to actually say, hey, wait a minute. Um, actually, somebody might have already reported this. Uh, and maybe, you know, if I just scroll down a little bit, you can see that the list um, it's still quite large uh, because I, I assume there's a lot of things that people request related to GitHub. Uh, so maybe it actually encourages me to be a bit more specific. Um, but maybe, you know, I actually find out that, uh, oh, you know, automatically push posts to GitHub. That's exactly what I was trying to, to request. And it seems like two people have already upvoted this. So I could then go into it. And, and, you know, then read the description and then actually upvote it so I can become a part of, of this existing post rather than having to create a new one. So I think that is really smart and it saves a lot of time uh, for, for people that, that are going to be managing this feedback. So Kenny is a really great example of how you can create a simple posting experience that also serves other kinds of business outcomes in terms of you know, making the day-to-day -day experience of your users and admins a little bit better. So now that I've showed you this, and this is a, you know, one of the simpler uh, posting experiences, you can see you only have a title and, and you know, some info that is even like optional. Um, I'm going to take you to the other side of the spectrum and actually show you um, another posting experience that is, you know, much more complex. And that is the, you know, the, the video uploading experience at YouTube, which as a YouTuber, I use every now and then. And I can tell you the first time that I was uploading a video, I felt like it was quite daunting because, you know, there's like multiple steps. Uh, some of them are like actually new features that, that have been enabled for me recently. Like now there's like these checks uh, on my video to make sure that there's no like infringement of copyright and stuff like that. Um, but as you can see, you know, there's steps here at the top and then there's like a form and, you know, it's a lot more than just a couple things, right? You got to do a title, you got to do a description, uh, you got to do a thumbnail. And, you know, there's nothing about the complexity of it being wrong. And what I wanted to highlight here is that sometimes you do need that complexity uh, to make sure that people are posting, uh, you know, content in your platform in the right way. Um, or you at least encourage them to. So for example, you know, once you actually get through the, the requirements, which are actually not that much, right? You just need a title. You don't even need a description. Um, there's this really smart way for YouTube to actually pick a couple of shots from your video, a couple of screenshots, and then you can decide, you know, if you don't want to upload a custom thumbnail, uh, it just gives you a couple of options here to choose from, which is a really nice touch. And then, you know, there's uh, a bunch of other things that, that you can customize, like adding the video to a playlist, or you may want to set up some tags. And of course, this should be encouraged because it's going to help you get seen, uh, you know, through the YouTube search engine. And as you can see, there's like a bunch of like other things that uh, you may or may not have to configure. But of course, they are, you know, very helpful in terms of uh, 
shaping that video before it gets published. Uh, and it takes care of setting up the steps in a way that it is, you know, logically sequential in, the, in a way. So you go through the details, you have a couple of other elements, like maybe you want to add subtitles or an end screen, then there's the checks. And then at the very end, which is one of the things that to me are most important, um, is the visibility settings, because most of the time I am going to be uploading a video a couple days before I actually um, want to see it, you know, live and, and published. And I think it's really great that they actually make the visibility the very last step because it sort of gives me the comfort of, um, you know, making sure that I'm not going to miss it. And that, uh, you know, when I hit save, it the last thing that I remember is actually setting up visibility. And this is where I could then go and say, for example, schedule. And if I click on schedule, then I can configure an exact date and time where the video will get published. So this is just to say that you can have a lot of complexity uh, in your posting experience. Uh, and still within it, there are ways that you can make it a little bit more intuitive and helpful for your users uh, to get to do what they have to in a, in a graceful way. And I can tell you that after you know going through this uploader a couple times, um, I have become very fond of it. And I can say that the, the, certainly the way that it's designed, uh, you know, really helps me um, upload videos in a very sort of streamlined way. So that's a little bit about YouTube. And the last uh, use case that I wanted to share with you is from this product called Navigator. And Navigator is simply a tool that you can use to uh, you know, in integration, for example, with another app like Google Calendar to be able to set up uh, meeting agendas with your team, right? So, uh, you know, you can use this and, and basically once you integrate it with your calendar, uh, you can see a list of all the events that you have in your calendar and set up agendas for them. And basically each agenda is sort of like a live post, right? Um, but it very much feels like you're, you're posting something on the platform. And what I really like about it is that it gives you a one-click access to the most important thing in this case, which is actually, uh, you know, adding a topic to the agenda. Uh, and then it has like these very nice touches, like for example, uh, you know, to decide, okay, it, what is this topic about? What do I want to get out of it? Maybe I'm sharing information most of the time, but maybe I also want to review status or I want to take action. And then, you know, I can come here and say, you know, review design. And then each of these agenda topics has comments and shared notes and tasks. Uh, but also it acts sort of like a normal posting experience in the sense that I can, you know, add a bulleted list. So if I'm, for example, taking some notes, you can see that it works uh, with, with some kind of like markdown formatting. And actually, I'm not sure if this is like full blown markdown or yep, it is. So I can have like an H2, I can have an H1 uh, bullet, bullet point. So it makes the, you know, actually taking notes uh, right below the agenda items very easy. And if you don't want to use, uh, you know, agenda topics at all, then uh, you can simply use it as a living document for your team to be creating, you know, agenda notes for your meetings. Uh, so this is a great example, I think, of another like posting experience, even though it's not quite posting because there's no action of actually publishing it somewhere. It kind of just sort of lives live and, and synchronous with everybody else. Um, but I thought the way that you actually compose things um, is, is really smoothly designed. That's a bit of an update in terms of some products that, that I really enjoy using uh, or have used in the past and, and some composing experiences that uh, I thought were either you know, very different to what we had before um, or are very smart product design decisions uh, or simply just really well designed uh, and crafted products. So that's essentially it for, for the concepts. Now, let me actually walk you through the current posting experience that we have at Tribe. So 
Um, shameless plug, we actually released Tribe, uh, the new version of Tribe uh, last week. Uh, we've been running, uh, you know, like private testing with users for a long time. This is a product update that comes on top of, of two years of actually having a product in action that has served um, the interests of thousands of communities built by um, startups and, and large organizations and, and, and creators. And yeah, there's a lot of feedback that has been taken into account to actually get to where we are today. And before we jump into, into Figma to actually show you a couple things that we did explore over the past few months, uh, this is the result actually. So we are here in one of the spaces of this community. So in this case, for example, we created a say hello space. Uh, and space is just like another word for, for you know, think about it as a Facebook group within the Facebook platform, uh, with the exception that this is sort of an intranet that is built and maintained by, by us, uh, by Tribe. And here you can see that you have a couple tabs and one of them is you know, a discussion tab where you have a feed of uh, related to people, uh, mostly introducing themselves. You can see that some of them in the beginning here uh, are not quite intros, uh, but that is because we do have a lot of spaces and we're just acquainting people with that structure. Um, but as you can see, there is a lot of posts here from people saying hi, um, you know, also people from our own team that are introducing themselves to the community. Um, that's me. So. Essentially, I wanted to share with you here is the posting experience. And what we could do here is uh, actually bring the composer uh, within the same column as you know the rest of the feed. Uh, and this is quite intuitive uh, as in other social platforms because the moment that you're going to be posting something, it's sort of going to drop down after you post it. Um, and so the composer lives right here and we may have some updates where we actually introduce uh, a global posting button here on the sidebar or make the button accessible in other places. And as you'll see, like there's a couple of examples of other types of spaces where we actually do need to do that, put the posting button somewhere else, because not always we're going to have this, this feed layout with the cards. Uh, so it's not always the case that we can we can actually make this happen. Uh, but this this section here, essentially, as you can see, the mouse is pointing already. Uh, it, it acts sort of as a button, actually, uh, because what we have is a, a modal type composer. Um, and, you know, take it as a beta, we still have to do a lot of polishing, but I think it still uh, manages to capture the essence of where we are right now. Uh, and that is that you can create a post, you can give it a title. Uh, so that is actually the only requirement that we have for a post, but it is highly encouraged that we, um, that you know, people add a description to their post. And as you can see, I can uh, add some text here and I can add another line. And one of the things that we introduced for uh, more power users is having quick access to, you know, other kinds of blocks uh, we call them that are going to allow you to do more than just text, right? Uh, so if you're, if you're familiar with, for example, Notion, uh, they do this and other products uh, as well. So it's just a way to easily access, um, you know, other kinds of things. Like for example, if I want to add a medium header, um, we do actually have to get rid of that slash there. Uh, but now I have a medium header here and now I could have a, a bulleted list. So this is a continuous bug, uh, but we'll be fixed soon. And as you can see, we have, we have bullets we can add. And one of, one of the interesting things about this is that when we first released this new composer, we, we didn't have these buttons here. Uh, and we thought that just like in the medium experience where we could abstract like all the logic of accessing like those those controls through a slash command that would be something that would help us uh, release some clutter from the from the visual interface and bring everything uh, more contextually as you need it. Uh, and we had a lot of strong feedback uh, from our existing customers saying like, hey, like, where are the controls? Like, I cannot find a way to actually upload an image or 
Uh, you know, people that have been using Tribe for a long time, they have communities of thousands of people and they're all already used to uh, what we currently had. It's actually quite a big change to get them then to to become more familiar with a more modern approach to to composing something. Um, and so, you know, quick tip, always know who your who your customers are and, and their backgrounds and where they're coming from. Um, take that into account whenever you want to try and introduce something relatively new uh, or, or non-conventional because it can be quite a leap uh, for a lot of people. So uh, we did actually bring back these buttons uh, to try and remedy that. So you not, you not only uh, you know, have access to the controls uh, from, the, from the slash here, but you can also just click on the plus button and then you have all the controls. Um, and then we've also made it accessible to have a couple of other buttons uh, that are going to give you quick access to some of the more important secondary actions like for example you know adding emojis or an image or inserting tags um, and this is to say that you know within your product when you think about how to define your post right you got to think about uh, you know what are the actions that you are encouraging your users to do what are the kinds of things that users are likely to be inserting in your post that could add a little bit of richness um, and it's not just text uh, and that could help you you know if you have that sort of information architecture of of your post then it's gonna that's gonna be something that is going to then help you uh, you know try to understand how you are going to be uh, designing this experience right here so as you can see that is what we currently have and now before we call this a day, uh, I'm going to actually take you through what we have explored in the past. Um, just, I'd say quickly, but we can take some time to go into the details as well. Uh, this is a, a, an attempt at modernizing uh, the previous version of Tribe that we, we just sunsetted uh, a couple days ago. And... As you can see, the it's it's similar in the dynamic of actually having the the composer here, uh, but this was on top of a global feed, um, and and we we had this paradigm where you had groups and you also had a global feed, uh, and you could introduce uh, posts on either. And one of the changes that we made in in the current platform and in, in the new version of Tribe is that every post similar to what you saw in Linear is going to be subject to living within a particular space. Now, uh, the logic behind this is that we envision a product where people can create different spaces within their community that serve different purposes, right? So for example, here you may have a situation where you, know, you want to encourage just general kind of like discussion kind of posts and and all you have to do is write some title and some description and, and you know you're good to go uh, but maybe in the future we will have spaces for example where all you do is you create po like polls or you create events or you create knowledge base articles and you know depending on what you're looking at the posting experience can be just a little bit more tailored uh, to get the user to do whatever it is they have to do a little bit faster and, and more intuitively. So that's going to translate in us having to think about uh, this composing experience a little bit more differently. And that is why we are for now thinking about this idea that depending on the space that you live in, uh, the posting experience will be a little bit different. So that's a little bit about the background there for why we're going in that direction. Uh, what we used to have in the past is something that looked like this. And we, we had this concept called post types. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's, it's really cluttered. Um, but it, you know, it got the job done in terms of uh, letting the user decide, uh, mainly admins that had more control to, to different post types to decide you know, what kind of post they want to make. Uh, so we abstracted that at, at the new version of Tribe and made it depending on the space. Uh, be, but before we used to have it like this. And 
depending on what option, so these are tabs, depending on what tab you would click, uh, you would get a different kind of you know posting experience. So for example, if it was discuss something, you would have to insert a title and also a description. Uh, ask a question would give you a different kind of placeholder text, things like that. Uh, if you would ask a question, you could also add a poll. If you clicked on this one, you didn't have the option. So this was really helpful under a very constrained set of use cases. Uh, but as we are opening up the platform to, to more possibilities and more use cases, it, it really was something that we could not scale really well. Uh, you know, beside the fact that these were actually uh, almost like entirely different entities. So every time that we wanted to make an update, uh, to, to different parts of the composer, we had to look at entirely different parts of the code base. Um, and that was making updates very complicated. So it was a, you know, a sort of holistic decision to move away from this and, and rethink it. And these are just examples of how we try to modernize the, the composing experience. So here you can see, for example, the creation of, of a poll within, within a post and how we were envisioning that. Uh, then this was the mobile experience, so basically no mobile experience. Um, as you can see, it was sort of built in into the, the page itself. Uh, you didn't, you were not taken anywhere else. It was sort of just in line, big publish button to get going and you're good to go. And just really quickly, uh, I could share with you like a bunch of examples of things that we try to do. Um, and you may be wondering like why, for example, this is like this and it's because uh, we used to have bot accounts in our in our platform, so you could easily switch uh, from posting as in this case Anna to posting as a bot uh, to seed content in the community from from different accounts and give the community a bit more livelihood until other people join. Um, you could you could add tags like this, and we were already like very early on envisioning this idea of the plus button from where you can access like more secondary actions, but you still keep on, on the same line of the hierarchy, uh, you know, some, some objects that are still very relevant for the user that are going to be one click away. Um, here are just some concepts for the formatting. Here's the plus button. We were from a very early stage again, also thinking about, okay, how can we actually improve the mobile experience, uh, by actually taking you uh, from the page itself that you were in to an entirely sort of modal screen within the mobile experience uh, that would help you just have a little bit more of ease of access to, you know, what you would traditionally see as a, you know, a mobile, you know, posting experience. So those were like a couple of things we were exploring. And then you can essentially see how we pretty much tried a lot of things in the past, like uh, full blown, like full screen view with controls at the bottom. Uh, so that's something that we tried. We had a lot of issues with this because a tribe, you know, you're, it's not only about posting posts, but it's also about replying to posts. And so one of the issues with like full screen uh, posting experiences is that uh, you lose the context of where you were before. And in terms of replying, that is very important. Uh, to actually keep the visibility of uh, you know what what comment or what post it is that you're replying to as you're formulating your own reply, um, and so we looked at like crazy things like this where uh, you know we had the the replying experience on a full screen, but you can still like show the post that you are referencing. Uh, so you see here, for example, replying to and then a snippet of of that post. So. We, we found you know early on that this was not the way to go because other than just being too much friction, uh, it was also gonna be very complicated because we had to introduce a different interface uh, to show the exact same content that was otherwise shown as a post uh, in the feed. Um, and we would also just run into like general formatting issues of like due to this just being an entirely different sort of styling. Uh, compared to what we were dealing with. Uh, so here you can see like other examples of uh, us actually trying to achieve that vision, but it, it failed quite quite quickly um, for all the good reasons. Um, here you can see we also tried the sort of linear approach of giving the properties here a little bit more, more real estate. Um, you know, just these are just sort of different concepts. This is a full-blown sort of screenshot from 
from another product just to do like a quick prototype of whatever it was that we were trying to explore here. And as you can see, like over time, this is an example of, of the first one actually that I showed you. Um, we were, we've been refining and refining and, and hopefully like agreeing on, on the things that we wanted to do, the things that we didn't want to do. Uh, this again is an example of the full blown, uh, full screen experience where we tried to go into a bit more of a fidelity. Uh, here you can see that sort of medium inspiration of putting the secondary actions on the top right inside a more options button. Um, having like post preview and, and you know this kind of stuff we might end up doing anyway sometime soon in, in one way or another but um, we just knew like early on this the way that we crafted this was not um, going to work well for us for reasons that I've just mentioned um, but we were also just cognizant as well of you know for example for 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 replies we were already like in this case envisioning that, hey, like we cannot always take the user um, away from whatever it is that they are uh, and try to make things a bit more in line. If we do actually head back to the current experience at Tribe, um, you could see that we already have a sort of a slightly different posting experience when it comes to, 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 to replies. Um, so if I were to come here to this post and I want to uh, write a reply, then it's not gonna be within a modal but we did try our best to try to preserve the, the visual language of what it means to input something in the platform. So even if you're adding a reply and it sort of happens in line, so you can still scroll through the feed to, to capture like other bits of the conversation, uh, there is still this sense of familiarity in terms of what you can do and where you can find the options that, that you care about. Um, and so that's like a direction that we've been heading into. Um, and yeah, we've been exploring this in like many different ways um, in the past. And, and we do, by the way, actually see this um, as, as a very important decision in our, in our composing experience for Tribe because uh, the composure within itself is, is a primary point of integration for other applications that in the future will want to build uh, on top of Tribe, right? So finding a, a flexible and scalable way to give space to a bunch of different options as the admins of the community may want to enable, um, we thought this was the, the way to go. And this is very similar, for example, to um, if you are on Slack and you install an app on your, on your workspace, uh, next to the chat interface on the left, you have that plus button and that basically gives you a panel with all the different apps and, you know, the kinds of things that you can do. So for example, if you have the Google calendar app, you can create an event right from the Slack interface without leaving Slack. And that is something that we very much, uh, are trying to look forward to within tribe here. So actually, uh, I can show you that uh, within this concept that we we explored in the past where we thought, okay, maybe we want to give the admins a way to customize the composing experience. Um, and you can decide, you know, whether you want to show the user avatar or you want to show, um, you know, different kinds of shortcuts. So if you're familiar with Facebook, uh, the Facebook composer has a way to give you like two or three things that the interface will encourage the user to do. And if you're in a space, for example, where like in Tribe, if you're in a space uh, where it's very important for users to, let's say, have a quick access to add images or create a Zoom call or add an event, then those actions would be instantly accessible uh, through through the platform, just one click away. And we're, and we're still very much thinking about this and finding ways to do that. So if you, for example, have the Zoom app installed in Tribe, uh, you can then decide, you know, how to make it easier for, for users within your community to have access, either your users or your admins to have access to those actions um, without having to go into the full blown like posting experience. And this is sort of like where we are today, right? So this is one of the most um, recent product designs that we've, we've delivered. Uh, so as you can see, this is, uh, I wanted to show you this one because it's a slightly different 
uh, UX copy than just a generic discussion. And it was just to show you uh, that example that I referenced earlier of, of you know, how do we tailor the composer per, per space? Uh, so it can be as subtle as, as this, uh, but it could also be, um, you know, in the same way that Canny has this way of showing you like the uh, a filtering of of the current post to try to avoid duplicates. We also try to are trying to make it possible within this model experience uh, to not try to go away too much from what we currently have because we currently just have like two or three different types of of spaces. So we don't want to uh, introduce like too many uh, visual interfaces at this point. Um, how can how can we make it possible for users to be informed, let's say, of similar questions within the space uh, before they go ahead and, and ask the question? So in this case, we are sort of nudging people into reviewing what's currently there uh, to make sure that if they have a question that is you know currently in the platform uh, within the community that is maybe even already resolved then users have a way to actually like, oh, you know, maybe I want to click into it and, and see the answer. And maybe that's going to clarify all my doubts. So I don't have a need anymore to have to ask a question uh, at this point. So these are just like examples of, 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 you know, the vision that we have behind the composing experience. Uh, all of these are, I, I would say, like necessary iterations that helped us clarify uh, the vision that we had for the product. Uh, I can say that it's definitely not a linear process. We had a lot of back and forth. Uh, we had some concepts, as you saw, that were actually quite high fidelity. And and that is because like it did take us time to actually get to know uh, what would be the appropriate experience, testing it with users, getting feedback, um, and landing where we are today, even though it, it's not perfect. Um, but at least we do feel confident that it, it, is, in, it is in the direction uh, that we do want to take this posting experience. And that is pretty much it for this video. I hope that you found it useful. It's definitely been a little bit more different compared to some videos that I've done in the past that have been a little bit more hands-on, a little bit more about skills. And this particular video has been more about just uh, trying to reason through product design, doing a bit more of reflection and also sharing with you, uh, you know, the internal journey that we've gone through at Tribe to get to our own posting experience and where we want to go in the future with it. So I hope that this will help you also with your own journey if you're thinking about building a social or multiplayer platform experience then hopefully maybe you found a couple of nuggets here that will help you define what is the right posting experience for your own product. And just to let you know, there's a couple more product areas coming up in the future videos. So if you found this useful and you want to keep up with the, with the next updates, don't forget to hit subscribe uh, to my channel. If you like this video and you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the like button as well, just to let me know that you enjoyed this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope that you're well and stay safe and I will catch you in the next one.